Scaramanga's car in Bond flick The Man with the Golden Gun appears to be an inconspicuous bronze 1974 AMC Matador Coupe. That's until its unorthodox add-on which allows Christopher Lee's character to fly through the air, helping him back to his secret island lair. But did the car really fly? In this video we're going to look at AMC's massive role in the movie, where the idea from the flying car came from, and exactly how the production team got the car off the ground. In the 70s, the American Motors Company must have made a generous offer to Bond producers the Broccoli family, because The Man with the Golden Gun features as a showroom's worth of their cars, as well as an actual showroom that James Bond himself drives through. As part of a product placement strategy as aggressive as a modern Bond fistfight, there's AMCs everywhere. Roger Moore drives an AMC Hornet hatchback, which he famously corkscrews across a river during a chase with Scaramanga's AMC Matador Coupe, with its equivalent four-door sedan police cars in pursuit. As far as Bond cars go, these were no DB5s, but rather a reflection of the 70s, especially Scaramanga's car with its bronze, or should we say brown, vehicle. Before we look at its flying credentials, let's have a look under the hood. The villain's bronze and black 1974 AMC Matador Brogum Coupe was the Oleg Cassini edition. AMC must have thought this more fitting for a Bond villain rather than the family-friendly sedans and station wagon equivalents. The Coupe was a two-door fastback, with a V8 engine producing 175 brake horsepower. Scaramanga was able to exploit a three-speed automatic powertrain, going from 0 to 60 in 10.4 seconds. It's no wonder then he wanted to put a river between himself and Bond. But it wasn't the specs on the road that made this car unique, it was the fact that it could fly. Or could it? We'll find out later. Ain't none of your port heads ever seen an airplane before? But where did they even come up with the idea of making the car airborne in the first place? Scaramanga's Flying Matador was based on the real-life AVE Mizar flying car, developed by American aeronautical engineers Henry Slominski and Harold Blake. This real-life car was set to cost between around eighteen dollars to $29,000. However, these plans were short-lived as the car and the duo responsible for it were tragically killed during an unsuccessful test flight in 1973. This didn't deter Bond filmmakers from pursuing the idea, however, and they decided to push ahead with Scaramanga's Flying Car, which would stow away Bond girl and General Nuisance agent Goodnight in the boot. The task of turning the car into a flying machine was given to special effects guru John Steers, who added the full-scale airplane attachments to the Matador for takeoff. These attachments were heavily based on the ill-fated Mizar part-car, part-plane hybrid, but the big difference was they were not set to take the car up in the air. We'll reveal how the team managed to get the shot of it taking off in the next section. However, despite the fact that the plane parts were just for show, they were similar proportions to a light aircraft. The modified Matador was 30 feet long, with a 42-foot wingspan. Ban. It's no wonder then that the car almost took off for real when a sudden gust of wind hit the vehicle. This was never part of the plan, and could have ended up in another disaster. However, the proposed cinema trickery used to make the car appear as though it was flying was a lot more sneaky. An AMC Matador did take off for the movie, it just wasn't a full-sized one. To give the illusion that it was jetting off from Thailand, Steers decided it was best to create a miniature version of the flying car. It measured one meter long, and even had little models of Scaramanga and his assistant Nick Knack inside. Rather than Thailand, the Mini Matador took off from Bovington camp in Dorset, UK, which is a military base for the British Army. The production designer on the movie, Peter Merton, would later reveal that clever editing made the plane seem like it was flying for real, although clearly there's less clever editing involved when Agent Goodnight opens the boot in midair. Lucky fans in the past would have been able to see this model displayed as part of the designing 007 exhibitions around the world, including the one that was held in the Barbican, London in 2012. As for the full-size version, it's unclear as to where that got to. Perhaps it's hiding in an underground lair off the coast of Thailand. But if you are keen to get your flying AMC fix, then you can find an impressive replica at the Hollywood Cars Museum in Las Vegas. We assume you can also leave your pilot's license at home for this one as well. For another 007 fix, see our video on the DB5. Until next time, I'll make like Bond and say goodnight.